So the place we're going to start with our Royal Warden is by painting in all of the clean black details. Now what I mean by these are the smooth ones that aren't necessarily, necessarily metallic. So we're talking about the casing of the gun, his spinal column in here, and various things like that. If you need help, just uh, check out the box up. Now, the color we're going to be using for this first and foremost is Pterodon Turquoise. And what we want to do is we want to take our Pterodon Turquoise on our brush, and we just want to start painting it on in a nice smooth coat all over these details that we want to be this color black. Like this. What this will do is it establishes our pre-shade, so we get a nice deep black when we come to add the actual black. But it also gives us our first edge highlight. And next up, once we've applied that pterodon turquoise, what we want to do is we want to take some iron warriors. We want to coat this over all the details that we want to be silver, but also all over the other additional black details that we've been calling industrial black. So the additional silver details include like the blade on here and the end of his gun barrel and the vents here and the various little pipes and things up here and the back of his head and also the spinal common going up here. And we want to count in the shoulders here as well. But we also want to use this silver on all of the joints, including areas like his hands, his elbows, his shoulders, his head, his shoulders, his knees, and his toes. Ha! Can't believe that was right in front of me and I didn't do it immediately. <laughs> so yeah, we want to keep going around with all of this Iron Warriors like this. And then we're going to come back. With all that pterodon turquoise and iron warriors applied, we're now going to add the black. Now we're going to do this in two different ways. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the black templar as an all over coat on any of the industrial black details we want. So this is areas like his joints. We want those to be nice and dark. And the industrial black are the bits that we've painted with Iron Warriors. So I just want to get this Black Templar all over these sections. Just like this. You probably can't quite see what I'm doing right now. That's because I'm painting his crotch. I'm just waggling my brush at the model. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. So that's one way we're going to do it. The other way we're going to do it is we're going to, over the pterodon turquoise areas, we're going to use a small amount of black templar. What we want to do is basically want to colour in the panel, but leave the edge. So we just want to take the black templar and paint it all over the flat of the pterodon turquoise, like this, and then leave the edge and continue on. The next bit like this. And what you'll see is it's already done our first edge highlight for us, which is really useful. And with that done, we've now got some awesome looking black. Now, before we do any highlights to any of it, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to coat in a few more of the base coats so we can do a lot of it all at once. Now, the first color we're going to use is some thinned down Rune Lord brass, and this is for all of his armor. So, like on his body, on his legs, on his head, on his hands, on his feet, pretty much everywhere. We are just going to leave the cape for now. So, it's going to be a slightly different color. But you just want to use this Rune Lord brass all over. In addition, on his head, just want to leave that central panel 
for now. Because again, that's going to be a different colour. Once that Rune Lord brass is dry, we're going to use some Sycorax bronze. And this is to paint in the cape. Like this. And we get a good strong coverage of this all over this cape. We want it to be nice and bright. But what we're also going to do with the Sycorax bronze is we're going to fill in these parts of the Rune Lord brass armor. So his little epaulets. I guess they're not called epaulets, are they? I don't know. So we're going to fill in this there. And we also want to use the Sycorax bronze around the outside of each of the armor panels, just leaving the inside to create a little bit of shadowing. And with that Sycorax bronze all applied, it's now time to do some shading. Now we're gonna use two different shades for the bronze. One's gonna be a contrast mix, the other is gonna be a brand new shade called Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss. Now the Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss is what we're gonna use for the cape and what we want to do is we just want to get a good coverage of this all over both sides of the cape. And next up with that Canoptic Armour Shade Gloss applied, what we're going to do is we're going to use some thinned down iron hand steel. And this is just to brighten up his back piece. We want to leave the Iron Warriors still showing through in the kind of the grooves and the battle damage, but also inside the deepest part of the concaved area, the recessed area. Like that, so you get this Iron Hands. Steel, Iron Warriors, Iron Hand Steel finish. And next up we want to create a roughly six parts contrast medium, one part Agaros Dunes and one part Wildwood mix. And we're going to use this all over the rest of those bronze details that we haven't already shaded. Like that. Now what we also want to do is we want to take a small amount of this. We just want to build this up inside the recesses of this back plate. So like on the reset on the battle damage and inside here on the concave. And we want to wash our brush off. Take a really small amount on our brush and then just kind of pull it out a little bit and then stipple some more around the back plate like that. Just to give it that really kind of worn, dirty look that we're after. And if you've got too much, you can just use your brush to just kind of dab it off and move it around like that. So you want to go around doing all of these bits like this and then we'll come back. And next up what we're going to do is a final shade. We're going to use a small amount of Basilicanum Grey and this is just for all those remaining bare silver parts that we haven't coloured over. 
So areas like this port here on his gun, the vents, and the gun barrel and the blade underneath. So just want to get this Basilica Island Grey all over, like this. Give it a nice dark metal feel. And next up then we're going to add some highlights to all those metallics. Now the first colour we're going to use is some Stormhost Silver. Now this is just for that back carapace. Just to make those edges appear really sharp. I'm not doing this across all of the metallics because a number of them are going to be like, are going to be Iron Hand Steel as a highlight. But for this back one, I just want to use some storm host silver because it's just that bit much sharper and shinier than iron hand steel because we've got a basically an iron hand steel base we want it to look nice and bright like that and with that done we're now going to use some iron hand steel and this is to highlight all of the remaining silver details so like area like the gun barrel you just want to pick out the edges but we also want to just apply this iron hand steel as a highlight to all of those industrial black areas. So areas like the joints and the balls and his fingers, all these kinds of areas that we covered over with the black really early on. And next up, we're going to highlight all of that bronze now with some Canoptic alloy. We just want to pick out all of the edges as well as like areas of detail like these glyphs on his neck piece like this. So I'm just going to go around doing this with the canoptic alloy and then we'll come back. And with all those metallic highlights applied we're now going to take a little bit of apothecary white and we just want to paint this down that middle panel reservation like this. Do want to use loads because I don't want it to be splotchy. Just a small amount. Make sure you just get it all over and work it into those recesses either side as well, like that. And next up with that apothecary white applied, we want to take a small amount of Fenrisian grey. We just want to apply this as little highlights to the corners. of the gun casing like this and just to the sharpest areas so like I'm doing the top sides of the boxes and by boxes I mean like the squarey details like this and with that Fenris and grey applied, you can see that it gives it just this really nice kind of clean shine on that black and it's really looking lovely. So what we're going to do next is we're going to use some thinned down Corax white. And we're going to use this to paint in all the bits that we want to glow. And so this is including areas like the nodules on the gun, his eyes, and actually I think that's it. So you just want to paint these in with this Corax white like this. We also want to use a small amount of Corax white to highlight the edges of that white panel on his head. Just take a small amount and we just want to run a little bit of it down the inside edge. Like this. And with that Corax white applied, we're now going to take some Tesseract Glow. We're going to paint this all over those areas that we want to be the glowing green, so this is all over his 
glowing nodules like this. And in his eyes, we're leaving the cables just for now. They don't want them to be the tesseract glow. Want them to be slightly different. And with that tesseract glow applied, you can see that the model's just oh, it's so close to being finished, but it's looking awesome. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the cables, and it's very easy to do. We've got the one here, the big one here, and we've got two little ones just in there. Now the colour we're going to be using for this is Orc Flesh. What we want to do is we just want to pick a cable. Uh, so many to choose from. I'm going to go with this one. What we want to do is we basically just want to make contact with the model with the Orc Flesh, and then just in one kind of big long broad brush stroke, we just want to get a good coating of that orc flesh all over. And just kind of go over it a couple of times, depending on how green you want it to be. But don't worry if it's too bright for you now, because we are going to darken it down. So you want to do this across all of the cables, and then we'll come back. And next up, once all that orc flesh is dry, what we want to do is we're going to take some black Templar and we want to paint this on either side of all those big cables. We don't need to worry about the ones inside him, like those, those ones in there. We just want to do it on these ones. So we take the black Templar and we effectively want to just draw a line of this paint as straight as we can, going all the way around the outside track and the inside track. Kind of like that to give us this kind of this really nice like a thin strip of green acting as like a as a green highlight to the black cable, and we just want to do that for this one and these three, then we can come back. And with that black Templar applied, just to really finish off those cables and make them pop, we want to take a small amount of moot green, just draw a small line, kind of like around here, in the curvature of the cable, just to give it that kind of impression of the light popping off it. And we'll do the same around kind of, kind of at the middle here on those cables on the back. And with that done, all that's left to do now is to finish off his base. Now, if you'd like to see how I'm gonna base him, you can either check out the Necron Warriors tutorial or how to paint Illuminor Zeras, both available here on YouTube. But what I always recommend is that you do the basing in the same scheme as the rest of your army. And there you have it. With that basing complete, the Royal Warden is now complete. This model does a couple of things for me. It's quick, it's simple, and the scheme is very easy to do, and it's really effective. Um, I really enjoy this model. Um, I, I think it, again, much like the Necron Overlord, I think it exudes a quiet authority. And it's just, yeah, it's a really cool sculpt, isn't it? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.